Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. All eyes will be on East Lansing this Saturday as number six Michigan takes on number eight Michigan State in the college football game of the week, the Paul Bunyan Trophy game. A game that has huge Big Ten title implications, huge implications in the Big Ten East, and huge college football playoff implications as well. And we are here to break down everything you need to know for this in-state top 10 rivalry matchup on Saturday. And we're going to tell you who's going to win this game as well. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, ready to break down the Wolverines and the Spartans. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And of course, check out everything down in the description below. We have so much exclusive content there for you guys. The biggest, of course, being our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. Make sure to go give those a look over on thegridironexpert.com. It will be a decision that you will not regret. It will be one of the best decisions you make all year long, as it is a year-long subscription. So make sure to go give that a look. Check out Prize Picks as well. Check out Bet Now as well. Use our promo codes in the links there for exclusive offers and exclusive content. Again, help us help you. Check everything out down in the description. So we take a look at this game, guys. Michigan and Michigan State. If you thought this was going to be a top 10 game back in August, July, August, you're lying to yourself. No one envisioned the Wolverines and the Spartans to be 6th and 8th coming into this game. But here we are. A game, again, with major playoff implications and major implications within the Big Ten. The winner of this game really solidifying themselves as the biggest threat to Ohio State in the Big Ten East. And keep in mind that neither of these teams has faced off against Ohio State yet. So the stakes will be very high in the division depending on who wins this game, regardless of who wins this game, really. You look at a little bit of history, the Ball Bunyan Trophy game. Michigan and Michigan State have split the last six meetings against one another. So Michigan has won three. Michigan State has won three. The home team, though, the home team has only won once in that span, that being Michigan back in 2019. The Spartans pulled off a major upset last year in Ann Arbor. No one saw it coming. They took down the Wolverines 27-24. to But now, everybody sees the Spartans coming. Michigan State's not catching anybody by surprise now. They've been one of the biggest surprises of the entire college football year. 7-0, 8th in the country. No one saw that coming from Michigan State. But the Wolverines are going to be caught off guard now. And the Spartans, of course, are going to be ready for their in-state rival in East Lansing. So you take a look at this game, guys. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Let's start with Michigan. Let's start with the road team like we always do. If you've watched Michigan football this year, if you know anything about Michigan, you know they want to run the football. That's what Michigan has done all year long. And they do it so well, so why would you not? The Wolverines are averaging 37.7 points per game, and they're averaging 253.3 rushing yards per game. Over 250 rushing yards per game. They've rushed for over 300 yards in three games this season. So this Wolverines offense, guys, their offensive line, their run game, solid. Very, very solid. One of the best in the country. They're led by Blake Corum, 729 yards and 10 touchdowns on the year. And Hassan Haskins, 602 yards and 10 touchdowns on the year. So 20 rushing touchdowns between those two. Michigan as a whole has rushed for 25 touchdowns compared to just 7 passing touchdowns. So right, that right there shows you what the Wolverines want to do. If you don't believe the yardage numbers, just look at the touchdowns. 32 offensive touchdowns, 25 of them have come on the ground. So this is a Michigan team that's going to try to bully you up front. We really haven't had to see much of Cade McNamara, and the stats show that. Cade McNamara, the quarterback for Michigan, he's completing 63% of his passes, which isn't bad, but he's thrown for just a little over 1,100 yards, five touchdowns to one interception. Just five touchdowns, one interception. The Wolverines are averaging 189.6 passing yards per game. They don't have to throw the ball. They don't have to. We have seen Michigan blow out multiple opponents this year where the Wolverines really have not been put in a position where they have to lead a game-winning drive, where they have to score late. Uh, obviously, the Nebraska game was very close. That's really about it. They blew out Washington, which was supposed to be a big test. Rutgers, they only beat by seven, but 
Michigan ended up coming through clutch at the end there. They beat Wisconsin by 21. They threw, threw the ball a bit more there because of the Badgers' stifling run defense. But for the most part, we're still able to rush for well over 100 yards against that Badgers defense that right now is only allowing over 50 yards per game. So this is a Michigan team that we haven't had to see throw the ball much, and you can question whether Cade McNamara can do that if needed. But they want to run the ball. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to do it well. When you look at Michigan State, they are much more balanced than the Wolverines. The Spartans are averaging 34.3 points per game, 251.3 through the air, 200.4 on the ground. And both those marks, very, very impressive. The key playmaker for Michigan State on offense, their running back, Kenneth Walker III. If you don't know his name, you're going to know it by the end of Saturday. You should know it by now. Kenneth Walker III, 997 yards and nine touchdowns on the year. He has rushed for at least 126, I know an odd number, but at least 126 yards in four games this season with multiple 200-yard rushing games. But the thing is this, Kenneth Walker III has stolen the show multiple times, right? Everybody wants to focus on him and they say, hey, look, Michigan State can run the ball just as well as Michigan. That might be so. But Michigan State can throw the ball much better than Michigan. Peyton Thorne has been great at quarterback for the Spartans, guys. Throwing for over 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns to just four interceptions, and he's doing it with two great wide receivers, Jaden Reed, who has 562 yards and five touchdowns, and Jalen Naylor, who has 512 yards and six touchdowns. So two 500-plus yard receivers who have combined for 11 of the 15 passing touchdowns from Peyton Thorne. Those are your top two playmakers. You've got a good quarterback. You've got two great wide receivers. You've got a great running back. The Spartans are more balanced and, dare I say, more explosive than the Wolverines. And that's going to be huge on Saturday. We say it's going to be huge because Michigan has a great defense. And the Spartans are going to need as many explosive plays and big plays as they can to exploit this stingy, elite defense. And I did say elite because when you look at Michigan's numbers, guys, it's it's there. Those are elite Defensive numbers, 14.3 points per game they're allowing. They're allowing just 299 yards per game. And we always say, if you can allow less than 300 yards per game on average, you're doing a dang good job. And Michigan is doing that. Michigan is doing that. They're allowing just 182.4 passing yards per game, just 116.6 rushing yards per game. The most points they've allowed all year was 29 points against Nebraska. So they have yet to allow more than 30 points. Nebraska was maybe the toughest test they faced, the toughest game they faced. They won that game. They allowed 29 points. When you look at the rest of their defense, guys, we looked at the passing numbers. We looked at the rushing numbers. How are they doing it? Well, they've only forced 10 turnovers. Michigan really isn't creating turnovers at a, at a high pace, at a, at a high rate, right? They're not. 10 turnovers through, what, seven games? Not that bad. Not that great. But the pass rush, the front seven. That's what's doing it for Michigan. That's what's been their strength. And they're led by an NFL first-round draft pick coming up, Aiden Hutchinson. Five sacks on the year already. They've got Josh Ross as well, linebacker, leading the team with 44 tackles. This pass rush as a whole is dominant for Michigan. The front seven, the battle in the trenches, is being won week in and week out by Michigan. Not just on the defensive line, but obviously on the offensive line as well because you have to have a solid offensive line if you want to run the ball the way the Wolverines do. So the battle in the trenches is key, and Michigan's winning it. Michigan State's got to find a way to prevent that. When you look at the Spartans' defense, it's not bad. They're allowing 18.7 points per game. The problem for Michigan State is their passing defense. It's their secondary. It's one of the worst in the country. It's the worst in the Big Ten. The Spartans are allowing 285.4 passing yards per game. 285.4 passing yards per game. Again, one of the worst in the country, worst in the conference. So the million-dollar question is, can Cade McNamara take advantage of that? Can Michigan's passing offense, and if you're Michigan, you're hoping you've, you've studied the numbers, you've studied the film, you know that the Spartans are vulnerable through the air. But can Cade McNamara, a guy who we really haven't seen throw the ball much and not in a big-time situation, can he get the job done? When you look at the quarterbacks that have beat Michigan State, right, not beat them with a loss, like in the loss column, but beat them through the air. Noah Vedro at Rutgers, 266 yards. Bailey Zappi, 488 yards with Western Kentucky. De'Eric King, when he was healthy, 388 yards with Miami. 283 yards with Northwestern with Ryan Helensky. I mean, none of those guys, with the exception of maybe De'Eric King, scream big-time playmaker, right? Which leads me to believe that Cade McNamara could put up big-time numbers against Michigan State. 
All those are big-time passing numbers allowed. Yes, Michigan State won all of those games, but their defense is going to find a way to shut down the pass. They can shut down the run. They're only allowing 121 rushing yards per game there. So if Michigan State can shut down the run game of Michigan, that's great. They don't want to be forced to win the air. Michigan State doesn't, Michigan doesn't want to throw, right? The Wolverines don't want to throw. So if Michigan State can force them to do that, that's great. The secondary then has to step up. Another thing that Spartans can do is find a way to pressure Cade McNamara, right? If he wants to drop back and throw the ball a lot, that's great. The Spartans are amazing with their pass rush. 26 sacks on the year. 26 sacks on the year, 12 forced turnovers. 12 forced turnovers. So 26 sacks in seven games, that's an amazing rate. Problem is Michigan has only allowed three sacks. Again, that just again shows how strong that Michigan offensive line is. So the battle in the trenches will be key, guys. Uh, not just from a, a protection standpoint, but from opening the holes for Blake Corum, for opening the holes for Kenneth Walker III. That's going to be the key in this game for the Wolverines and the Spartans. What's going to happen there? So what is going to happen, guys? What's going to happen in East Lansing on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff for a top 10 matchup? I hate it when that happens, but so be it, right? So we mentioned that the last six meetings have been split between Michigan and Michigan State, right? Three and three. Of the last six, three of those games have been decided by one possession, which means three others have not. The three one-possession games were all in Ann Arbor, and the three one-possession games were all won by Michigan State. That's just a little history for you. History doesn't always mean anything. But I'm going to say that the trend's a little bit different now, right? Michigan State beat Michigan last year, 27-24 in Ann Arbor. Big upset, right? Shocking upset. No one saw that coming. So you think Michigan's hungry, right? They're ready to come in here. They're ready to get revenge over the Spartans. They're ready to take down the Spartans in East Lansing. A place they can win, absolutely. The thing is, I don't think they do. I think Michigan State wins this game. I don't have faith right now in Cade McNamara. I do not have faith in Michigan's passing game, despite the poor secondary from Michigan State. What I do have faith in is Michigan State's balance. I have faith in Peyton Thorne. I have faith in Kenneth Walker III. I have faith in their wide receivers. And I have faith in their defense up front, in their trenches, the defensive line, the linebacking core, and in stopping the run. And the Spartans can just slow down the Michigan rushing attack. They don't have to stop it completely. Slow it down and force Cade McNamara to win the game through the air. I think the Spartans can tighten up in that secondary and win this game at home. With a more balanced offense, with a defense that doesn't get enough credit, with home field advantage on their side, I like Mel Tucker and the Spartans to get Get the job done on Saturday. Michigan State wins this game. They improve to 8-0. The dream season is still alive. And if they continue to continue to take care of business, they're going to set up a huge showdown against Ohio State on November 20th. A game that will probably determine the Big Ten East and a game that could determine who makes the college football playoff. But give me Sparty on Saturday. We're going to have an instant classic in East Lansing, but we're going to go with Mel Tucker and the home team to get the job done. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. So much exclusive content there for you guys. Prize picks, bet now, and our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Do not miss out on any of those. Check it out right now. One of the best decisions you'll make all year long. Go give it a look. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,